Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be the first discussion video for the Page Turners Book Club. I'm going to post this and leave comments open all day tomorrow and pretty much forever. If you guys have any thoughts about this, feel free to comment down below. And this month's book is about night film. So if you have read this, feel free to join in the discussion down below. I will also leave the Goodreads group linked down below, which a lot of us have been talking on. And there will be a full spoilery discussion that we can all talk on all day tomorrow if you guys want or for as long as your heart is content. So obviously this is going to be a somewhat spoilery discussion. So if you're fearful of spoilers, don't, don't watch this. So I got myself a cup of tea in a pumpkin mug and my cat who is now climbing onto my lap. So it's going to be a good night. We're just going to sit and we're going to chat and discuss some books. Can you settle? So first off, my thoughts on this are that I liked it. I know this has kind of conflicting opinions and I feel like a lot of that is based on how it was marketed and the idea that you had going into it versus how it actually played out. And I think as soon as my views changed on the type of book it was going to be, I started to really enjoy it. Also, I think a lot of the issues that people had with this was the pacing. It was very slow. And I will fully admit that I had an issue getting through certain parts and definitely dragged. So things that I liked about this were the fact that it read like a horror movie, which again kind of brings pacing into question. This definitely was set up and paced and toned like a horror movie. I mean, this book obviously follows a cult recluse horror film director who uh, has produced and directed really, really dark and banned movies that have a very serious underground following. And this book kind of tries to give you that vibe in itself, which at times made me question what later came into play is if this book was one of the movies. And that definitely came into play later in the book. And I'm kind of glad that I had that vibe early on because if you can tell, let me put down my tea. Because if you can tell, I started marking things that were things that I personally look for when I'm watching a like thriller horror movie, um, just different like symbolism type things or every time like a scene changes or significant like foreshadowing lines, I started marking them. And then you can see that I quickly gave up because the whole book did that and it would have been an entire package of post-its because there are so many. All of the orange tabs were um, scenes that color was really relevant because obviously, I mean, based on the cover, you can already see that red is a very relevant thing. The daughter of the director's coat who committed suicide and we're following her death and the mystery behind it. The main item that they have as evidence is her red jacket and red is a very significant color in horror movies. It's always very prevalent either right before somebody gets murdered or right before something very significant or very ominous is about to happen. Um, it's just a very symbolic color. Same with dark colors. Now, I may just be the only person who's crazy enough to notice this, but our main cast of characters, Scott, Nora, and Hopper, all always wore dark neutral colors. Hopper was always in gray, Nora was always in brown, Scott was kind of in between all of those. And going further into that, because I'm just that insane, all of the side characters and suspects that they're interviewing throughout the course of this entire book all have something pastel or light about them, and it kind of represents their part in the story that they're not as important or significant or dark of a character as the ones that we should be focusing on. So I just went way too far in depth, but this is how my crazy mind works. But I really like that that part of it was very present, like it is in horror movies, just basic symbolism and tone. I also really liked that Cordova really felt like a real presence in the story, even though he's really not present at all until the very end of this, just because he feels like a main character because he is so talked about and so revered and important but you never really meet him. It's all just kind of hearsay of what you know about him and what is said about him. And I personally wish that I could see his movies. I wish that he was a real person and that his movies actually existed so that I could actually see what all the hype is about because he kind of has this presence like Kubrick does or Von Trier or Tarantino or even Chuck Palahniuk in books. He's a very like cult following disturbing mindfuck of a character or of a director who just writes really disturbing stories and I just thought that that was such a cool presence in the story even if he wasn't present. 
I really liked his presence. Okay, I said that word a lot. Okay, so getting into the ending of this, I'm gonna get back to the concept that if you go into this book thinking that it's going to be a mindfuck, terrifying horror book, you're gonna be highly disappointed in the ending because this book is essentially a detective mystery, somewhat psychological thriller. And once you switch into that mindset, you're gonna be more okay with the ending, in my opinion, versus a horror movie ending because this is definitely not going to give that to you. This book kind of had like multiple endings. Like I feel like there were definitely a lot of certain points where I was like, okay, it can end here. Nope, it's going to keep going. It's going to end here. Um, I feel like once we kind of uncovered the fact that Ashley had cancer and that is kind of what brought on a lot of the different aspects and a lot of the like hidden parts of it, um, it was believable. It was realistic. It was somewhat satisfying, it explained a lot of things, it wrapped a lot of things up. And again, from there we get into Cordova being an anonymous person in a nursing home because everything that went down with his daughter kind of broke him and he just wants to live out his life anonymously and doesn't want to be a part of the culture anymore. Again, believable, realistic kind of satisfying but not really and then we get further. We get to the point where Scott is involved and Scott is in this horror story but not really where it ends up with him on the island with Cordova and he's been a part of the story all along. The ending is still somewhat vague to me. I still have yet to kind of really come to terms with how it ended. So let me know what you guys thought of it and how you interpreted it because I'm still kind of struggling with it to be honest. It it hit me hard and the longer I've been thinking about it the less I think I'm okay with it if that makes sense. It doesn't quite conclude everything for me, I don't think. So definitely let me know what you guys think of that. And that's pretty much where I'm gonna wrap up just kind of my overall discussion of it. I know that was very vague. I didn't get into any specifics. I'm gonna leave that for actually talking to you guys in the comments and in the discussion thread for the sake of the length of this video. But I do wanna pose some questions to you guys because you know, this is a book group and I'm kind of moderating it. So first question being, did you like all of the added visual elements to this book? All of the documents and emails and pictures and everything, I personally, I like that because it's a new interactive way of reading and I feel like it's kind of changing the reading world by adding more than just plain narrative to the story, which I think is very cool. My issue with it is the fact that we actually get pictures of the characters, which kind of gives me the issue that I personally have with book to movie or book to show adaptations where I have a very distinct visual in my head of what a character is supposed to look like. So when I actually see them, it may not add up, which kind of takes me out of the story. Mainly for the case of Ashley in this book, because she's described as so ethereally beautiful and like un otherworldly beauty. So when you see a picture of her, it's almost a letdown to me because I have this built up in my head that she's like this angelic character and she, whoever they photographed in this book as the model, may not have lived up to what you personally have in your head as a perspective of her. That's just... That's just my thoughts on it. So what did you guys think about all of the added stuff? I liked it, but that one aspect of it kind of took it away from me. Do you guys agree with me that it was a kind of a horror movie script type vibe where like the symbolism with the colors where I went on that whole tangent um, or just imagery and tone, is it very horror movie-ish to you? The third question I have is with the symbolism of the box. And I know we talked about this a little bit with some of you guys on the spoiler free thread where the mystery box that nobody can unlock and how that comes back into play later in the ending of the book where Scott is going through that like mind fuck of a journey where he's like on the sets of the movies and doesn't know what's real and what's in his head and we are still kind of left open to interpret that but he is in the box. What did you guys think of the imagery of that or just what did you take away from that scene because it's still it's still a little foggy in my head, so maybe give me a little bit on that. The fourth question I have for you is again something that I think that I completely missed, or it's something you're supposed to interpret on your own, but I'm pretty sure it's something that I completely missed. I went back and tried to find it and I just couldn't. What did Hopper find in Ashley's apartment when he broke in there and then pretty much ended the investigation for himself. He pretty much took himself out of the story because he finally came to peace with his relationship with Ashley and what happened to her. What did he find in her apartment that brought him that peace? And the fifth question is, what are your overall thoughts of Scott 
as the protagonist in this book. Did your thoughts change? Did he evolve as a character? Because I feel like going into this, he was an obnoxious, washed up, not really enjoyable character to read as my protagonist. And while he somewhat remained that way, he kind of reverted back to a childlike state, thanks to Ashley and all of her, like, breadcrumbs that she left along the way. Also thanks to Nora and Hopper, because they are obviously both young influences. They kind of give him different views on life and a different way to view things and interpret things, and everything isn't really cut and dry or black and white. So he definitely grew on me. I don't think he's my favorite protagonist by far. I did not really enjoy him. And the last thing are what are your overall thoughts of the books? Did you like it? Did you hate it? I'm sorry that a lot of you hated it. I didn't realize how controversial the book would be. Next month will hopefully be a more smooth sailing read. We can pick less of a controversial book if you guys would like. Also on that note, I'm going to kind of give you guys the options of books for November. And again, this is not necessarily inclusive. If you guys have um, different books that you want to read, I always leave a write-in option that people can vote on. So if you're not interested in any of the books that I have, you're more than welcome to suggest one. I'm also going to give you options for November and December so we can kind of get ahead so you're not like trying to scramble to get a book and read it within the last couple weeks of each month. So I'm going to try and give you guys like a month ahead to pick. I will leave the Goodreads page for all of these books down below because I'm not going to give the description of like eight different books. Um, so if you are interested in any of these or want to find out more of them, just go ahead and click the links down below. So starting with November, the first pick is a rollover from last month because it was like a very close second place to Night Film to read for October, and that is The Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. So if you guys still want to read this, this is still going to be an option. If you're looking for a heavier adult read, I'm thinking about reading The Enchanted by Renee Denfield. Um, this one, this one's gonna be a rough read though. It's gonna be heavy. On a lighter but still kind of heavy YA contemporary version, I am thinking about The Serpent King by Jack Jeff Zentner, not Jack Jeff. Um, this came in an owl crate not too long ago, so a lot of you might already have this book. And the last one for November is Where Futures End by Parker P.B. House. This is supposed to be a very trippy, ambitious YA book that's kind of interdimensional. So again, go and check out the Goodreads page to vote on your pick for November. Could be this one, it could be any of those. And getting into the December books, I know this is pretty far off, so everyone's opinions may change over time, but right now this is like tentatively what I'm looking to read during December, so I figured I'd throw them in there. The first one is Winter Spell, and this is by Claire Legrand. This is a very good December getting into the Christmas spirit because this is a retelling of the Nutcracker. So, and a book that a lot of you have probably already read, but I personally haven't, is Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rosh. It has snow in the title, so I'm sticking it into the winter months. So if you want to read this, feel free to let me know. Moving into heavier adult books, I have If I Fall, If I Die by Michael Christie. This is supposed to be pretty heart-wrenching, but a really good family values type book. So that seems good for you know, traditional December holiday time to read, even though it might be heartbreaking. It's still family oriented. And the last one that I'm thinking about reading is All the Birds in the Sky by Charlie Jane Anders. So I will put polls up for both November and December on the Goodreads page, so feel free to go and vote on there. So I look forward to talking to you guys in the comments and on the Goodreads page. I know this was a very brief, um, kind of review of the book, but I was just kind of like setting up the discussion for you guys to actually talk about it, and I will be talking with you guys all day tomorrow. I'm filming this the night before, so feel free to leave all of your thoughts, whether they're good or bad, because I know some of them are bad, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If not, maybe next month will be better for you. So thank you guys so much for participating in this. It's really fun. I really enjoyed doing this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.